Hello friends, in this video we will study about the most commonly used communication standard RS232 which is whose full form is recommended standard 232. So let us start with our topic. Whenever we talk about communication between two equipments which are located at a very far distance means there is a long distance between the two equipments then we say that these two equipments they communicate by using the serial communication. Serial communication means that the bits are transferred in the one at a time okay when serial communication is taking place between the components which are located at a very far distance from each other okay so in serial communication there are various interfacing standards which are defined which are developed by the uh, standard institutes like ieee and eia and these institutes they give the standards that these standards should be followed whenever two equipments are communicating with each other and out of these standard one of the most commonly used standard or most common standard is rs232 and its full form is r is for recommended and s is for the standard so its form is recommended standard 232 okay so in this video we are going to study in detail about this standard before starting let us first define the two terms which are known as the data communication equipments and data terminal equipments Because we are talking that the two equipments they are communicating by using the serial communication. So serial data will be there. So data communication equipments are the devices which are sending the serial data. So those devices will be called the data communication equipment and data terminal equipments are the terminals. They are the terminals or the computers that are sending or receiving the data so these two terms we will use it uh, in our video that uh, data communication equipments we will refer to the devices which are used to send the serial data and data terminals that are sending or receiving the data okay now let us again come to our rs232 standard So RS232 it is a communication cable which is commonly used for transferring and receiving the serial data between two devices. So we have, will have two devices the data communication devices and the data terminal devices. Okay, so the, between these two devices, we will use the RS232 communication cable and it is used for transferring and receiving the serial data. Now why this RS232 is developed because there was a need for
because in between the data terminal equipments and data communication equipments the transfer of data is taking place now there uh, in the whole world there are various types of technologies and various manufacturers are there so there should be a standard notation which is commonly used by all the manufacturers so that a standard is developed okay so this uh, uh, rs232 it is taken as a communication standard between the data terminal equipments and the data communication equipments so for this this rs232 is developed for the need of signal and handshake standards okay was developed by EIA. EIA, its full form is Electronics Industries Association. And this RS232, it was developed as a standard by this uh, Electronics Industries Association so that all the manufacturers they will use this common standard for communication between the data terminal and data communication equipments Now RS232 because it's a communication standard so it is used uh, to describe the physical interface and protocol for relatively low speed serial data communication between the computers and related devices. So whenever the computers uh, and its devices they are communicating with each other and whenever we are having the uh, low speed serial data communication we will use RS232 as the communication cable between the equipments So if we commonly used to uh, see the RS232 that is where in our day to day life we are using RS232 is the interface that our computer uses to talk to and exchange data with your modem and other serial devices. So when we see in our houses that uh, we are having a computer and the modem so it uh, in between the computer and modem we use a cable and that cable is called the RS232. So this is the interface which our computer uses to talk or exchange the data with the modem. So in this case, as I have defined that RS232, it is used between the data communication equipment and data terminal equipments. So in this example, where we are having the computer and the modem, so computer, data terminal equipment the equipment which can send and receive the serial data so that is the computer and we have the modem so modem is the data communication equipment and in between these two we are connecting the rs232 communication cable okay so this cable it is used to send or receive the data between the two types of equipments
so rs232 if you want to define this it is defined as the interface interface is the word used for the communication path between two components so because rs232 it is used for communication between the two components that is why it is also called as an interface so it is an interface between the data terminal equipments and data communication equipments using the serial binary data exchange it is always used to send or receive the serial data so whenever we are using the serial communication between the two components then we will use rs232 as the communication cable now this rs232 cables these rs uh, rs232 cables they common they are commonly available in 4 9 or 25 pin wirings so when we use the cables either it will have 4 pins or it will have 9 or 25 pin wiring now when we are having the 25 pin rs232 this uh, 25 pin it will connect every pins okay there are connections for every pin whereas if we are having nine pin cable When we are having 9 pin RS232, it do not include uncommonly used connections because in 25 pin, all the pins are used in 9 pin, uncommonly used are uh, removed and only those which are commonly used, they are available. And in the 4 pin cables, we are having the bare minimum connections are there, which are very, very important. Only those connections are available. So if we are using 25 pin RS232, all pins will be connected in 9 pins only. Most commonly used pins will be available and in 4 pin bare minimum connections will be present. And now if we are using these pins, if we want to use more connections, then we can use jumpers to provide the handshaking for those devices that require more connections. Now this RS232 as I have said that it is most commonly used between the computers and the modems. So we can say that RS232 So RS232 it is most commonly used in the case of personal computers where it is used to connect the computer to the modem to the UPS printers mouse and other input output devices. So it is the main application of the RS232 communication cable.
Now this RS232 cable, it can send the serial data in both the synchronous and the asynchronous mode. The serial data transmission, it can be of synchronous type or the asynchronous type. In the synchronous type, we use the synchronization between the sender and receiver, whereas in asynchronous mode, there is no synchronization. So in both types of modes, this RS232, it can be used to send or receive the serial data. So RS-232, it also defines a number of control circuits which are used to manage the connection between the data terminal and data communication equipments. As it is used as the communication cable between the two, so not only as a communication table uh, cable, it also defines a number of control circuits which manage the connection between the two equipments now each data control circuit it only operates in one direction that is either from the data terminal to data communication or from data communication to data terminal equipment so it will manage the uh, it will operate only in one direction okay Now since here the transmit data and receive data they are the separate circuits because uh, data terminal data communication these equipments are separate so the interface that is RS232 it can operate in full duplex manner that is in both the directions it can operate okay so uh, uh, we, we have seen here that RS-232 because uh, 232 it is used as the standard for the serial communication. So both type of communication like asynchronous and synchronous. So in both types of modes the RS-232 can work and also in the full duplex mode also this RS-232 can work. So it is supporting full duplex mode in synchronous method also and in asynchronous method also now let us come to the specifications of this uh, communication cable rs232 Now, as the communication standards, they can transmit the serial data either in the form of current or in the form of voltage. So, this communication standard RS-232, it uh, transmits or receives the serial data in the form of voltage levels. And these voltage levels can be either logic 0 or logic 1. So, logic 1 and logical 0 levels are defined for the data and uh, these are used for the data transmission also and for the control signal lines also. So both the data and the control signals they will be transmitted in the form of voltage levels that is in the form of logic 1 and logic 0.
Now the valid signals because it is transmitting the data in the form of voltage levels in the form of logic 0 and logic 1. So the range of voltages between plus 3 to plus 15 volts they will be treated as logic 0. Range of voltages between minus 3 to minus 15 volts they will be treated as logic 1 and the range between minus 3 and 2 plus 3 volts this is not valid for the case of rs232 so uh, for uh, this the output of rs232 it will be logic 0 or logic 1 so logic 0 will be for the plus 3 to plus 15 volts logic 1 will be for minus 3 to minus 15 volts and in between these minus 3 to plus 3 these voltages level they are not valid for rs232 so in this way the data is transmitted serial data is transmitted using the uh, communication cable rs232 okay Now for the data transmission lines, the TXD, RXD, these are the transmission lines for the transmission of data and receiving of the data and their equivalence. So for all these lines, the logic one is defined as a negative voltage and it is called as the signal condition is called as the mark condition and the logic zero is defined as a positive voltage and the signal condition is referred to as the space so whenever we called mark in the case of rs232 it will be a negative voltage and the output is logic one and whenever we call this space that refers to the logic zero and a positive voltage so this is how the uh, data is transmitted using this cable now rs232 as i have said that it comes in the form of 25 pins also in the form of 9 pins and in the form of 4 pins also so here we will see the pin description of 25 pin rs232 so as i have said that rs232 it is available in various pin numbers like it is available as 4 pin ic also as 9 pin also and as 25 pin also so let's study the pin description of 25 pin uh, rs232 communication cable So this is a 25 pin RS232 communication cable. It is having 25 pins over it, 1 to 13 from one side and 14 to 25 on the other side. So let us see that how these 25 pins of this communication cable, they are defined. So here I have written for pin, uh, from pin number 1 to pin number 7. Pin number 1 is the protective ground. Uh, 
pin number 2 is for the txt that is transmit data pin pin number 3 is for the received data pin number 4 is for request to send pin number 5 is clear to send request to send its short form will be rts bar over it clear to send then cts data set ready that is dsr and then seventh pin is for the signal ground now out of these protective ground it is common <clears throat> transmit data it is an input terminal receive data it is an output pin request to send it is an input pin clear to send it will be an output pin data set ready it is also an output pin and signal ground it is common okay so here i have shown that which pin is for as is acting as an input pin and which pin is acting as an output pin we will study its description later on here i have written only the names that how these uh, pins are defined now let's talk about uh, 8 to 25 pins Now from pin number 8, the common name is CD bar. It is the received line signal detector. Pin number 9, it is reserved for data set testing means these are the test pins, pin number 9 and 10. Pin number 11 is unassigned. Pin number 12, it is the secondary received line signal detector. Pin number 13 is the secondary clear to send. Pin number 14 is secondary transmitted data. Pin number 15 is transmission signal element timing, means the uh, clock signal for the transmitted data. And pin number 16 is for the secondary received data. Now in these pins, you can have seen that uh, when we describe the pin from pin number one to pin number seven, we have the signals like request to send, clear to send, data set ready, transmit data, receive data. And same pins here are for the secondary clear to send, secondary transmitted data, secondary received data. So there are pins for the primary data also for the primary channel and for the secondary channel. Same pins are there. Data pins that is transmit data, receive data and the handshake signals like clear to send, request to send, data set ready. These are the handshake signals. So in this pin diagram, if we define uh, the, there are pins for primary channel also and there are pins for the secondary channel also. So this was up till pin number 16. Next we have pin number 17.
So pin number 17, it is for receiver signal element timing, means it for the receiver clock. And then pin number 18, it is unassigned. Pin number 19, it is for secondary request to send. Pin number 20 is for data terminal ready, again a handshake signal. Pin number 21, it is for signal quality detector. Pin number 22 for ring indicator. Pin number 23 for data signal rate selector. 24 is for transmit signal element timing. Again, the clock for the transmitter. And pin number 25 is unassigned. So this is the description of all the uh, uh, 25 pins of this RS232 cable. That how these 25 pins they are defined. Now let us study the function of these pins. That uh, for what purpose these pins are used. So let us start with pin number 1. Pin number 1 was the protective ground here. So it is used that the uh, chases ground means the uh, ground of the IC which will be connected at pin number 1. Then pin number 2 it is for the transmit data means the uh, data which is to be transmitted that will be available here at pin number 2. At pin number 3 we have the received data so the data which is received here the received that will be available here. So transmit data it is an input pin means the data which is to be transmitted by the RS232 that will be available here. The received data means the data which is uh, received by RS232 uh, that will be available here. Then we have request to send, clear to send and data set ready. These pins they are the handshake signals okay. Handshake signals means when the RS232 it is communicating with the computers or the microprocessor we are using. So the communication is not direct. We use an interface, uh, communication interface which is called the USART that is 8251. That 8251 it has the signals request to send, clear to send, data set ready. These are all the signals of that IC8251 programmable communication interface which is also known as USART and that USART will send these signals to the uh, RS232. So that is why these are known as the handshake signals because these signals are actually from the 8251 to the microprocessor. Okay. Now pin number 7 it is the signal ground this is the common reference uh, signal okay then comes to pin number 8 Now as the RS232 pin it is as a communication cable between the data communication equipments and data terminal equipments. So pin number 8 it, this signal is activated when a suitable carrier is established between the local and the remote data communication devices. Suppose that we are having data communication devices one is available very close to the data terminal equipment and one is very far. So if a uh, signal communication, uh, a carrier is established between them, then that signal pin number 8 is activated, which is called the carrier detect, means whenever the carrier is detected, this signal will be activated. So that was pin number 8. Next comes pin number 9.
Now, this pin number 9 is for the data terminal equipment serial connector. Means uh, whenever DT, uh, the DT equipments, they are connected with RS-232, this pin is activated. This signal, it follows the incoming ring to an extent. Means whenever the incoming ring is uh, coming to the RS-232, this ring, uh, this pin number 9, it follows that ring. Okay. And normally this signal is used when we are having the data communication equipments operating in the auto answer mode. Now next comes the pin number 10. Pin number 10 is the uh, test pin. It can be used whenever we want to test the RS-232 uh, IC. So pin number 10 is the test pin. Pin number 11, it is unassigned. So comes to pin number 12. Now, as I have defined that uh, pin number uh, 8, we studied that it is for the carrier detect. Now, pin number 12, it is for the data carrier detect. It is also for this. So whenever a carrier is detected, the signal will be activated. Activated. Pin number 14 and pin number 15, these are for the transmission. We studied that pin number 14 is the transmit data that is TXT and pin number 15 is for the transmitter clock. So these are for the transmission whenever secondary channel is used. Okay, so in this we have the primary channel pins also and secondary channel pins also. These were the transmit data pins and clear to send was the handshake pin. Now out of these pins, pin number 15, 17 and 24, these pins are... These three pins 15, 17 and 24, these pins are used for the synchronous modems. Whenever uh, the transmission, the serial transmission, it is taking place in the synchronous mode, then the synchronous modems, they use the signals on these pins and these pins are used to control the bit timings. Next, we were having pin number 16, which is for the received data, then pin number 18, which was for the test pin, pin number 19 was request to send. So these were again the handshake signals. Next, we were having pin number 21. So pin number 21 was for signal quality detector. So as the name says that it is used to de uh, detect the quality of the signal to check the quality. So this pin number 21, it indicates the quality of the received carrier signal. Next is pin number 22, which is known as the ring indicator. Now this ring indicator pin, it means that the data communication equipment, it is informing the terminal equipment that the phone is ringing. Because we know that we are uh, using this uh, 
आर एस टू थ्री टू मोस्ट कॉमनली इन द केस वेन कंप्यूटर्स एंड मोडेम्स आर यूज नाउ वी आर हैविंग अ फोन ऑल्सो कनेक्टेड विद इट सो द डी सी इट विल इन्फॉर्म थ्रू दिस सिग्नल रिंग इंडिकेटर दैट द फोन इज रिंगिंग एंड ऑल द मोडेम्स विच आर डिजाइन फॉर द डायरेक्ट कनेक्शन टू द फोन नेटवर्क दे आर इक्विप्ड विद द ऑटो आंसर ओके सो दिस फैसिलिटी इज अवेलेबल इन द मोडेम्स विच आर डिजाइन फॉर द डायरेक्ट कनेक्शन विद द फोन नेटवर्क नेक्स्ट पिन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री विच इज फॉर द डेटा सिग्नल रेट डिटेक्टर सो दिस पिन विल बी यूज फॉर डिटेक्टिंग द रेट एट विच द सिग्नल इज ट्रांसमिटेड और received so these are the uh, total pin 20 uh, 25 pins of the rs232 cable now in this uh, pins as i have said that some pins are used for the primary channel and some pins are used for the secondary channel so we are having the pin number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 20 these pins are used for the primary channel and these pins include both the data signals also and the handshake signals also pin number 2 and 3 these are for the transmit and the receive data so these are the data signals or we can say data lines whereas 4 5 6 7 8 and 20 these are the handshake lines Similarly we have the pin number 12 13 14 16 and 19 which are used for the secondary channel Now among these we have data lines also and handshake lines also the remaining pins like pin number 15 17 21 and 24 these are used for synchronous data communication so this is how we can divide the total 25 pins that uh, some pins are for primary some are for secondary and some pins are for the synchronous data communication so this was the description of the 25 pins of the uh, rs232 now this rs232 it also comes in the uh, 9 pin configuration and 4 pin configuration so in 9 pin configuration only the most important pins they will be available and in the 4 pin configuration only the most important pins they will be available now if we talk about the application of rs232 this rs232 because it is uh, used as a communication cable between the uh, data communication equipments and data terminal equipments so data communication equipments they will be the computers and the microprocessors and data terminal equipments they will be like modems and input output devices now when this uh, rs232 it communicate with the it is communicating with the computers and microprocessor it does not directly communicate with it we have uh, because rs232 is it does not define some standards some uh, encoding like uh, framing of the characters and uh, error detection that is not performed by rs232 so for all these purposes we use an interface between the rs232 and the microprocessors or the computers and this interface is the 8251 that is the programmable communication interface also known as uasart so this is like we are having the microprocessors then 8251 uasart and we have the rs232 cable 
Now this uh, A251 USART, its input output pins, they are all compatible with the TTL logic. Okay. And here we are having the RS232. So let's see that how the USART and the RS232, they communicate with each other. So the, uh, as I have said that uh, the RS232, it does not provide uh, some information like the characters encoding and framing and uh, error detection. So the details of the character format and the transmission bit rate, they are controlled by a serial port hardware, which is known as USART. So when this communication, serial communication is taking place, all the things which are to be controlled, they will be done by the USART. So USART because it supports the TTL logic so we have to study the TTL to RS232 conversion and also RS232 to TTL logic conversions. Now, uh, as this RS232 and the USART, because USART is compatible, is having the TTL logics and RS232, it is not compatible with the TTL logics. So here, uh, we use a line driver between it, which is called the MC1488. So this MC1488, it converts the USRT TTL logics to the RS232 compatible signals. And the RS232 compatible signals, they are converted into TTL logic by the MC1489. So here two line drivers are used MC1488 for converting the USART from TTL to RS232 conversion and MC1489 for RS232 to TTL conversion. So let's see that how these two ICs they convert the logic levels.
Now, as this, uh, I said that uh, the TTL to RS23 conversion, RS232 conversion, it is carried out by the IC MC1488. So, uh, this is the internal circuitry of this uh, line driver. Here, various pin numbers are written that pin number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 9, 8, and 11, 12, 13. So this IC, the rest of the pins like pin number 1 and 14, it is connected to plus 12 volts and minus 12 volt and pin number 7 is at ground. So this line driver, it converts the TTL logic levels like the signals from the USA RT 8251, the transmit data and the RTS and DTR, RTS is request to send and data terminal ready. So these signals are given to the line driver and this line driver converts these signals to the RS232 compatible logic levels. So this conversion that is uh, TTL to RS232 conversion that is done by this line driver, okay. Now coming to the RS232 to TTL conversion, we will use the line driver MC1489. So this is the RS232 to TTL conversion done by the IC1489. Here we receive the uh, RS232 signals and these signals are converted to the TTL logic levels. RHD is the received data. CTS is clear to send. BSR is data set ready and to the control data uh, carrier detect signal. Okay. So this is uh, the RS232 to TTL conversion done by this 1489. Now this is the internal circuitry the various pin numbers are written here and the pin number 14 it is at plus 5 volts and plus uh, this pin number 7 it is at the ground. So the difference between 1489 and 1488 is that in 1488 we were having it was operating in the uh, range of plus 12 volts to minus 12 volts whereas the 4, 1489 it is at the constant voltage level that is plus 5 volt. So that is the difference between the two uh, line drivers 1488 and 1499. And these line drivers, they perform the conversion of RS232 to TTL and TTL to RS232. So in this video, we studied about the most commonly used communication standard, which is known called the RS232. RS full form is recommended standard 232. We studied that uh, the spin is uh, this uh, RS232, it is available in various configurations. So, we studied the 25 pins description what are the uses, what's the requirement of it, and then we studied that how the TTL to RS232 and RS232 TTL conversion is done. So, I hope that this topic is clear to you. Thank you.